Waking up every day with scars that remind you of a previous pain is very challenging, especially for an artist. How do you come back from the constant reminder and the pain of what has been lost? Kwekuti was a household name in the early 2000s and he gave us smash hits after smash hits. He even contested in the Big Brother Africa 2007 edition, after which he moved to South Africa to start his life. And then there was that unfortunate fire that threatened to take his life. Today on People in Places, we are privileged to hang out with Kweku to catch up with him on what has he's been up to since he's been back, how he sees the change in Ghana music, and talk about his project, No Awam. It is a pleasure finally getting to talk to you, Kweku. And um, the first thing I'll say, for those who do not really know who Kweku T is, what should we tell them? Um, I guess I'd say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a patriot. Mm -hmm. I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a patriot. I'm a Pan-African. I love Africa. Uh, I'm a father, you know. I've been a husband, <laughs> you know. I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. I'm a creative, I'm an entrepreneur, um, and, and, and I guess I want, I want the best for my people, you know. Let's talk about your music. Um, I read on your Instagram, Instagram profile that yours is called Higher Life. Yeah, Higher Life Music. Okay, so what is Higher Life Music? Is it a blend of something and something together? Well, um, I was one of the pioneers of what is hip life. You know, I helped um, lay the blueprint for what that is. So, uh, higher life music mm -hmm. is, it's really my ode to my, my forefathers, okay. you know, my ancestors. They brought high life. Mm -hmm. And high life has laid the foundation for different um, genres of music around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we have a gift of this nature, why not build on it? Mm. So higher life music, um, it, it, it's an ode to them, but at the same time, it's a different way of thinking. It's a mm. different mind state. It's mm. an elevated mind state, you know. It's an, um, an elevated way of approaching the music as it is, and the music and the art. Mm. You know, so higher life is a lifestyle, mm. you know. So mm. higher life is a music. Okay. And, and Higher Life is the company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, <laughs> I'm rough with him. <laughs> Let me bring you to Big Brother. I think um, in 2007, when you went to Big Brother, I, I, I don't even think I... You didn't watch it, did you? I didn't have, I don't think I had TV. You then. didn't have a TV? I, 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 even which if I had which TV, rock did you live I had, under? If I, even if I had TV, I don't think I had a DSTV to okay. be able to, because I remember Yao t told me to vote for you and I'm like... My brother? Yes, and I'm like, I should vote where? I didn't know what he was talking about. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about... Big you know brother. Ghanaians don't vote, so... <laughs> well... <laughs> 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 so, let, let, so what, what made you decide to join in the first place? Um, actually, my, my boys forced me to, okay. you know, um, peer pressure. Mm. Reggie, Eddie Blay, you know, Kwame, Kwame Fati, you know, they, they just felt I was, I was a good candidate to be mm -hmm. on the platform. I didn't want to do it because I felt like I was, I was in a different place in my life. You know, I had matured and, you know, going to be in a house and I, I'm a very private person, you know, and what we do, entertainment, like already people the audience own part of our lives, mm. you know, so to have the rest of my whole life dissected on screen was, uh, it wasn't something I was really, I, 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 it didn't fascinate mm. me, you know, but I, they broke it down to me and I realized it was also a good marketing tool. Okay. And I feel like I have a, a bit to give to the world. Mm. So 
it would have been um, selfish of me to deny the world of me. Okay. So, so. so that was in 2007. Yeah, crazy experience. Um, I, I remember I read an article that quoted you as saying that Big Brother was a blessing and a curse. A gift and a curse, yes. A gift and a curse. Yeah. So what did you mean? Well, you know, when, when you go to a platform like Big Brother and I'm people saw me as an interesting character, so I had a lot of, I had a big fan base, you know, so you come out of the house, and I, I didn't win. My aim wasn't really to win. It was a marketing tool okay. for the music and whatever else I was doing, mm -hmm. entertainment. Um, but, you, but you come out of the house, and you didn't win, but people feel like they gave you, like, thousands of dollars <laughs> oh, in your don't? pocket. No, they, they don't. When, when you're evicted from the house, you don't get money? You don't get nothing. Well, in my year, in my year, uh, the first, the winner got $100,000. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, the winner got $100,000. Everybody else got nothing. And wow. then I think there was an uproar over that. Mm. And the next subsequent years, oh, okay. like the first and the second would get, like one person would get like maybe... 200,000, the other 100,000. Oh. But the rest of them is like, wow. you are waste. Wow. Yeah, so, so people see you and they expect a certain lifestyle, mm. you know? So if you don't uphold that lifestyle, like maybe you're in a club, they expect you to be popping I, bottles and yeah. whatnot. Um, if they don't see that reflection hmm. of the money they think you have, wow. then they look at you like, <laughs> Maybe you blew all the money, money or you're yeah. not doing anything with your life. Mm. Um, and you know, Ghana, Ghana, <laughs> Nigerians, the Nigerians that didn't even win, like they go back home and people buy them cars and give them all sorts of envelopes yeah. of money. And, yeah. you know, but Ghana doesn't translate. You come back to Ghana and they're like, yeah, hey, yeah. you try, you, you did very, very well. <laughs> yes, thank you, you did well. <laughs> but, you know, Ghanaians don't really, Ghanaians don't appreciate you like, you know, for instance, the Zimbabweans appreciated theirs, or Nigerians, mm. and so on. Um, so it's like you come out of the house and you're on your own. Mm. Let's talk about life in South Africa. We yeah. were here, yeah. and we had an unfortunate call about you being in a fire. Yeah, that was almost my call back home <laughs> <laughs> to I, my I, maker. I, 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 I saw the pictures, and I was like... Wow. What what happened? Um I can't I can't really tell you because I woke up, I smelled smoke, went towards the smoke, and then there was an explosion. Ah. You know, it was all the way across the room. Mm. But there was an explosion, so whew. um the room was cleared up real quick, mm. you know, before I could actually, but before, they didn't call police, they didn't call the fire service. Oh. So nobody can tell whether it was arson or it was a, a faulty wiring in the room. Okay. Nobody knows. Okay, you so, lived there alone? I lived there alone, yeah. Okay. okay. So you, you, when you came to you were in the, in the hospital? Yes, um, I, I... How long were you in coma? I was in a coma, I was in a coma for a couple of days. Like three or four days, um, my lungs collapsed. Mm. Uh, my lungs collapsed. You know, my my arm was second, third degree burns. My face was burnt. Uh, well, we don't we don't actually see anything. Yeah, that's God. Yeah, that's God and melanin. Mm. The same thing that people used to <laughs> yeah they used to tease me. I tell you, I'm so black. When it's dark, nobody will be able to see you. And, and that, that melanin is actually what saved mm. me. So, you know, it's a blessing in every curse. Okay. I'm looking at your scars. Yeah? Do you, do you um, look at it like a, every day and regret maybe like? I don't regret nothing in my life. You know, these are like, nothing is, like I said, nothing is, is negative if you can if you can learn from it and, and see the fortune, like this taught me 
gratitude. I live in gratitude, mm. you know. Um, the, the things that stand out is like my voice, my voice was never like this, you know. Um, and that's a constant reminder when like I strain my voice and I start to lose my voice and mm. stuff because uh, they stick a, stuck a tube down my throat because mm. um, I was breathing through a ventilator. Mm. My lungs collapsed. But this, this is like, you know, th there was this woman in the story that this woman saw me and she was like, yo, who did that? I was like, what she do you mean, who did that? She was like, yeah, she had a patient who went to get a, um, a surgical procedure to have her arm become like this. Oh. And she was like, yours even looks better than that. Oh. You know, so this is, this is, you know, this is God's tattoo for me. I got other tattoos I'm, I'm finna make, you know, so <laughs> it just gave me an excuse to get more tattoos. Yeah, and Ghana can't complain too much because, yeah, I already have this one. Yeah, if y'all not complaining about this, then how much more this one? Even before the accident, there were so many other things that happened that was like, God, why me? Mm. But this taught me that, that, like, you know, your face healed. Mm. You know, when you walk into a room, they don't have to look at your face and be like, that's your, your badge of, you know, for the, the whatever trauma that you've been through. Mm. My accident was, was somebody's negligence. Mm. You know, so I started, funny enough, I started an NGO called Through the Fire, like the Through the Fire Foundation, okay. where it's to combat and make people aware of negligence. I saw but, in the gym. Is it, right. is it like a, a routine thing you've been doing? Does it's it have something, anything to do with your hand? Well, I mean, I, I, like, to, I like to stay fit. Mm. But yeah, I couldn't move my hand when I came back, you know. Uh, if I show you pictures of what it looked like before. Um, I couldn't move my hand, so the gym helped me gain the strength in my arm back. They wanted to amputate my arm. Ouch. Yes. Um, so, I mean, now, like, I can box, mm. you know? Um, so the gym had a lot to do with it. Yo, shout out Total Fitness, ANC. Um, all the guys out there, they really, they really helped me out mm. in that respect. How do you see the music industry now? What, what has changed? Well, there, there's more control. People, the artists have more control over the distribution of their music. Okay. You know, so we have social media. Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, mm. the younger cats are now engaging social media a lot mm. heavier. Yeah. You know, when I went to Big Brother, there was no, I think it was just Facebook had just, began. you know, began. Yeah. Um, there was no Twitter, there was no, Instagram, there was no um, Snapchat, you know. Um, so they're, 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 that's very heavy there. Yeah. Um, so that control over distribution it, is a key key element because yeah. the only way you're going to be able to disseminate your information about whatever you're doing yeah. is to engage directly with your audience. Yeah. Um, they're really innovative. Yeah. The younger cats, they're really innovative and mm. I love it. It's, it's, it's a great thing. Um, very creative. Um, I don't really appreciate the different factions. You know, there's, they're factions. Yeah, huh? yeah, man. Either you're Tema. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate them because they stick together. Like mm. all Tema people are like, you know. But, um, you know, and I cry. It's like if you're not Sak, you know, you're not Sak or Diaz camp. Well, you're not Stone Boys camp, you're well, not, Shatawali's you know, Shatawali's camp. camp. You know, just camp, 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 camp. I don't appreciate that, mm -hmm. man, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like people should look beyond the pop. Mm -hmm. You know, people should look beyond what's out there and, and just and patronize music as it is because mm -hmm. music is, is it's love. It's mm -hmm. that art form. It yeah. is, it is, it is. Um, so let's talk about your project since you've been back. I see no awam. I've seen this no awam on your IG. I've seen it. I've seen <laughs> you wear it. I've seen it everywhere. What is no awam? What's what's going on? Um, well, okay. So awam. Awam means fake. Yeah. You know, for those people that don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's a deeper meaning behind it. Yeah. Um, but. When 
so when I came back, you know, everything was on social media and stuff, and people would see me and be like, ah, Kweku, Chale, I see you shot this new movie, yo. Mm. You know, Chale, the movie, the B. I'm like, which movie is that? <laughs> you know, I've been in a coma and thing. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, that movie, that movie. You know, you were in a hospital. They tell you were burnt. I was like, uh, that was my real life. I went through that. That was my experience. Um, so No Awam is basically, it, it's to let people know that this, wh what I'm living is real. Mm. That was not a movie. That okay. was my real life. So um, I decided to put together this song mm. to speak a little on that. And at the same time, like this campaign, mm -hmm. which is like, challenging everybody to be the most authentic version of themselves you know because even fake people don't want to admit they're fake <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. even fake people don't want to admit they're fake so it's like if that's the case mm. you know let 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 me know let mm. me know what your definition of mm. awam is mm. and then beyond that what in society is awam mm. you think we need to get rid of mm. you know because there's a lot of stuff going on out here mm. from people balling in the clubs mm -hmm. when they don't have the money to pastors who are raping their their you know congregation mm -hmm. and little kids yeah. and stuff um right now you don't know whether <laughs> if you're dealing with a girl whether her her ass is in plants <laughs> or not and then there's a fake underwear that they wear and and the because i'm asthmatic the butt looks bigger than what it is you know when the accident actually happens it's like ah by this one you've lost a bit of weight right yeah and i know you didn't do no calisthenics so what's popping you know <laughs> where's the reality man to ig and people posing against cars and whatnot that doesn't belong yeah to man the fake is too much yeah. so you know i'm yeah. here to bring back the real because mm. when i was growing up keeping it real was very important yeah so that that's really what I'm about. That's no, what No Awam is about. Very, you know. very, I think it's a, it's a very good campaign that we should Thank all support. Thank you very it's much. Very, Thank very, you very, very much. Very I got the drink. <laughs> you know, the Tiger Up Milk is called No Awam. Oh, I make it myself. Okay. Yeah, so just, you know, inspire people to be the most authentic version of themselves. And mm. I believe once you do that, we can grow as a people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, are we looking at any collaborations with any of these new artists? Um, yeah, man, you know, I'm open to a lot of collaborations. I mean, the, the new single, Cool V produced it. Okay. Um, I'm working with, you know, there's a young lady called Sana. She's doing the backing vocals. So, yeah. Um, there's, uh, Biko. Biko's on there. Mm. Uh, a lot of people know him by Biko Music. Mm. Young, talented individual. Mm. Uh, I'm really, my focus is on the, the next generation. Mm. You know, I, my focus is on the people that don't have a voice. Hmm. Cause I remember when I didn't have a voice and nobody gave me the time of day. Sure, so sure, that's, sure. you know, that's me. So sure. definitely, yeah. So All of them. Bought me and my man things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you owe me money, homie. <laughs> Shout out to medical. <laughs> so one thing that I think our audience would want to know, and I want to know, mm. what happened with D-Black? You guys were cool. Oh, we still cool. You still cool? Yeah. Really? Oh, you because, mean we were cool like, yeah, I mean, eh, I, they look nice. No, or, I mean, not yeah. cool like they, you look nice. Uh, I, I, saw, I saw you two perform on stage during the Basta Rhymes mm. uh, event. Yes, I've yes. seen your videos. He's in most of your videos. Yeah. And, but um, since you've been back, well, you know, I, I actually thought he would probably be the first person to do a collaboration with or something because you guys had a, a tight thing going. Well, you know, I, I, I always support, you know, the, the, the voiceless, as I said, you know, mm -hmm. the up and comings. So that collaboration was an extension of that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're cool. We're still cool. Uh, if there are ways we can synergize and make money. Mm. Me, I'm a, I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I'm, I'm open to it. You know, but everybody has different... Pe people need to grow, mm. you know? And when I... If you look at pictures of him before and pictures of him now, mm. he's like two different people, yeah. you know? And so in growth, you have to leave, 
you know, if you give birth to your child, when they get to university, you have to leave them, to let them leave the house and go and, you know, find their, their calling. I hear, <laughs> I hear. I'm sure your your fans would agree. You, 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 Even though me, I, I think know you, you're story. pushing, yeah. you're pushing. You want, you want to, you want to get story. the story. Oh, the stories there, there are plenty. Hmm. There are plenty. I just, you know, I I choose to dwell on the positive hmm. as opposed to the negative. I, I'll give the negative energy. Hmm. I'm about the love, you know. About the love. God is love. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anything oh else, nothing else matters mm. but the love, mm. you know, so, yeah, more power and whatever Mandem is doing, I'm always behind Mandem, mm. you know, so you got to do your thing, man, and man's a support, mm. you know, as long as it doesn't hurt me and my brand, mm. I'm, I'm always about that, mm. you know. Comfort. Well, before we go, um, you definitely have to do a freestyle for me. There's, there should be something from Noah Wam that, I mean... Yeah would wrap up the whole situation. Like a gift then? Eh? Yes. Yeah. Do, do, do you need a beat? <laughs> I can do it acapella, it's all right. Okay. Um, let me see. So this is the hook. Mm -hmm. This one, you know, be our one. Mm -hmm. That though they claim they hold be our one. If you know be logical, then it be our one. Mm -hmm. I live this life for real, no our one. You know be our one. You know be our one. Real life, true story, no I want. Mm. No be I want. You no know, be I want. I live this life for real, no I want. Mm. Thank you guys for watching this episode of People and Places. We came to you from Hillview Hotel at Abokobi and we hung out with Kweku Tea. We hope to come your way another time with another exciting edition of People and Places. <laughs>